Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon Marcello alongside Michael Nyslick. This is the Auburn Undercover Podcast presented by WeHaveDonuts.com, D-O-U-G-H, Nuts.com, Gourmet Donuts, based in Birmingham, deliver to coffee shops throughout the central part of the state in Birmingham, but they also deliver donuts to Prevail Union coffee shops in Montgomery and Auburn. Check them out for at WeHaveDonuts.com for much more information on their gourmet and beautiful donuts. That's, again, WeHaveDonuts.com, a proud sponsor of the Auburn Undercover Podcast. Mike, um, a lot of things to get to early this week uh, on the podcast that we start off this week, uh, uh, almost approaching mid-January, believe it or not. Uh, we'll talk plenty about Auburn basketball and just the amazing things they're doing. But first, let's get some uh, football discussion here out of the way that we really needed to, needed to discuss since the last time we talked to folks. Um, the big thing being that uh, quarterback Jarrett Stidham's coming back. Uh, not too surprising, Mike, but still, in a way, it's almost like recruiting a five-star quarterback again and, and getting him back. And an elk had to die for that to happen. That's yes, sad. yeah. If he did not, if he did not kill that elk on that hunting, do you think it would have been different if he had not been successful on his hunting trip? Do you think that was the sign that he needed uh, to come back? What if someone like weakened that elk? Um, before he had a chance to shoot it, just to make it easier for him to hunt. Yeah, I don't know. Just it's so a controversy we'll, we'll need to get to the bottom of uh, next time we talk to him. We'll have to talk to the park ranger. Um, it was the obvious decision, but just with the way he was thinking, I mean, if there was something to think about, you know, obviously there was a chance he was going to leave. Uh, you know, he could have just shot it down weeks before. Um, but obviously he had uh, had some doubts that he had to work through, I guess. Um, not surprised, but also uh, uh, <laughs> some fans, I think, were primed for the Malik Willis era, right? Nick, yeah, Nick, that's Nick weird. You don't, you don't want that right now. Um, it would have been a total rebuild, though, if he didn't come back. So you avoid that. Uh, but now they have some other – he's going to have to uh, be better uh, with all the question marks they have on offense. Yeah, his big thing is he needs to cut down the turnovers. Uh, four t- fo- football, football, four fumbles in those four last games. Well, uh, they're the pick six, and right. uh, and uh, he's just gonna have to get the ball away quicker. I mean, when you're dealing with a new offensive line, that's gonna be kind of figuring it out. Um, he's going to have to get the ball <laughs> rid of the ball because uh, I don't think he's gonna even have as much time. I mean, he had uh, one of the best guards in the country in front of him. He had a five-year center in front of him. Uh, you know, he, he's not going to have that luxury anymore. Um, and so he's going to have to kind of uh, pick that up. And with the running game, it could take a little while. Uh, he might have to throw the ball a little more. Very possible, especially early in the season. Yeah. As I try to figure out their running back stuff. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. A lot of folks, you know, the prognosticators, they had him going in the middle rounds. Yeah, like the fourth um, round, something like that. So I mean, he could have he could have went. I mean, it was legitimate. I mean, he could have left, um, but I don't think he's going to leave unless he's a second round pick or higher. Yeah, and you're with the quarterbacks. I mean, you're talking about getting into that first round if you could really prove yourself, and it's a big jump. And some of and these this defenders, was, and this was a, a really harder. good, and this is a really good quarterback class. Yeah. Got what former Heisman winner. It's got uh, two a bunch, bunch of finalists. It's got guys that that people have fallen in love with already. And Stidham's kind of been on the periphery of that. I'm sure he'd have a team that really liked him, but uh, I don't think he would have been a guy that they reach for in the first or second round. Like you like you said, fourth round would have probably been where he would have fallen. Yeah. He wouldn't have been a guy everybody was talking to talking about uh, oh. heading in the draft. They, they'd still be talking about the Wyoming kid, uh, you know, Sam Darnold. Of course, uh, Baker Mayfield and even Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's going to get that stupid label on him of, can he play quarterback in the NFL? I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he can. Uh, I think so. I'd pick him. He has a pretty good honest. resume. I mean, he's done it all. And he did it all. By, by the way, I know we're getting off track here. did it all behind one of the worst Power 5 offensive lines over the last two years. Um, his offensive line was atrocious, Mike. And he yeah. still did what he did, throwing the football and running it. Everybody's going to go, well, yeah, he's a runner. Yeah, but look what he did throwing the football, too, behind that just 
awful offensive line at Louisville. Um, so anyway, and when you list all those guys, I mean, uh, Jarrett wouldn't have been at the top of that pack. And no. so, uh, he could kind of set the standard for next year. Um, but without carry on, uh, they're going to have to figure some things out because uh, this offense did not look the same, uh, without him and he's gone. Yeah. He, you know, we've long said he's the heart and soul of that Auburn offense. And they have got to find out, find that new heart and soul. And usually it is the running back. It hasn't been the quarterback. Now, I'd say it'd be interesting Nick, to see. It'd be an interesting if they tweak the offense that they couldn't maybe. find the running back and put it on Jared Stidham. Um, it's very possible. I mean, Chip Lindsey would be more willing to do right. that than Gus uh, Malzahn. It would it'd, it'd depend on how much control he actually has beyond just calling the plays if he wanted to <laughs> remake the offense as opposed to just kind of reload. Well, and I think that goes into the spring practices whenever they start. It could start as early as late February, but with spring practices, I think that those that's mostly going to focus on Auburn trying to figure out what to do at running back. Um, yeah, because if Asa Martin uh, is it Asa or Asa, I don't know. Asa, Asa I Asa. believe. So I had it right. So Asa, if he's like a special guy, uh, you know, special talent, they go and then they just kind of build around him, or Cam Martin takes the next step, or they kind of finally have some confidence in him you know, maybe the offense looks the same. But if it doesn't, they could say, look, we need to introduce some uh, different pass concepts. Definitely. More, more pass schemes and things like that. And and you're more comfortable with Stidham. You know, he doesn't have, you know, he's not coming off a year break. There's not going to be that rust. Uh, the only question, and with the passing game, you can help your offensive line if you just got a quick strike passing game. They don't have to block for very long. Uh, maybe yeah. that's how they kind of get those guys going. And uh, they got the, and they got that going this year. Listen, that's the other good thing. Auburn returns its receivers. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan Davis was a big, big part of that quick strike passing game they developed. Yeah, uh, you know, a few games in the season, and <clears throat> that's a good way to kind of get running yards without running. You know, uh, and they yeah. liked Devin Barrett in that role too, out of the backfield. Right. He he was kind of one of those guys that they just like to throw the ball to, and he'll be back, obviously. So. Um, They've It'd got be interesting options. to see if it looked diff if the offense looks different next year. It'll be interesting, uh, just because Gus has not done that. I mean, <laughs> Gus is reluctant to change what he likes. Yeah, but I will say this: they did change a little bit this year. Yeah, uh, but not obviously. totally revamped. You know, right, not like the right. build around the quarterback type offense. Which, with their talent coming back, maybe that makes the most sense. Yeah, I would think so. Um, but to me. You know, we talk about recruiting. I didn't see him leaving, but him staying is like picking up a five star in this recruiting class. Well, like I said, I think it's just the difference of having a re rebuild or not. Uh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, so, because I, I think you would have had to say, "We're well, look, we're rebuilding." If we didn't have Stidham, because you can't go to a freshman or uh, a guy that's just played one year. Because, uh, you know, your quarterback competition would have been Malik Willis and Joey Gatewood. So, been very difficult. Yeah. And, you know, instead, instead of said, I mean, uh, when I talked to him at the SEC championship game, he said he still had a lot to prove and he was hinting that he was coming back. And then he kind of changed his tune a couple weeks later. I think he, he got that feedback and started realizing, okay, maybe I really do need to think about this. Maybe I could leave and just be a mid round pick. Maybe I can improve my stock at Pro Day and, the combine, but ultimately, you know, I think the upside for him is much more, uh, is it, higher than dropping off, so, so to speak. Cause mm -hmm. someone's, someone's gonna, no matter what, after this upcoming season, someone's gonna take a feeler on him, even if he had a subpar year, just because of the natural talent yeah. that he has. Um, moving forward, you know, this is rumor season, uh, even after all the coaches move on and, you know, hires are made everywhere, but uh, uh, still some rumors going on out there. Uh, the rumors about Herb Hand, uh, Auburn's offensive line coach. Now, I kind of saw it coming even right after that Peach Bowl game, which is why I went up to him and was trying to talk to him about his contract because his contract expired uh, that night um, after the Peach Bowl, and the offensive line didn't do so well in that game. Obviously, this is a knee-jerk uh, world we live in, but it's also a knee jerk world that coaches live in sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even though he's best friends with Gus Malzahn, so to speak, they could, 
they could have, you know, pulled the trigger and said, Hey, uh, we're not going to give you a new contract. We, you know, the offensive line struggled too much early in the season. Then late in the season with a uh, offensive line that had a lot of seniors on it. We can't have that. But, <clears throat> um, also what, what's interesting is getting word Sunday, uh, from the, uh, AFCA coaches convention, uh, which if you guys don't know, it always happens on the weekend before, uh, the national championship. championship game. It's where all the coaches get together. There's speakers and everything. And they, it's kind of just, uh, you know, kind of everybody catching up and also a lot of coaches looking for jobs or trying to, uh, even for next year, or two years down the road, kind of put their name out there to some of these coaches. Um, maybe that might be looking, but anyway, um, we got word that, uh, uh, Sunday that, uh, coaches were going around asking about Herb Hand and, uh, mm showing interest in the non-existent opening for the offensive line coach at Auburn. Um, now, I, I talked to, to a couple people. One person told me that uh, that Herb Hand has, quote, got his contract, and he's good. He feels Does fine. He signed his contract I, or, that, has, no, or literally I, has one that he could sign? I asked that, and I, I didn't I, – yeah, I asked that, and I didn't get an answer. But he's got a contract, and uh, whether he signed it or not, you know, I don't know if that really matters at this point. I think the intention is there the by Gus Malzahn to, to let him come back. Now, Gus Malzahn, of course, said in mid-December that, of course, he'd come back. You know, he's one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, listen, times change every day. Um, and if you look through the numbers, <clears throat> uh -huh, her pants offensive lines have never been elite. Well, um, it's, you know, look, when, 11, when an 11 sack game is on your resume, it's not good. And then you end the season with a six with six X that UCF had against, and that defense wasn't exactly uh, yeah filled with five star talent. I mean, Clemson maybe you can write off, but still eleven is just an insanely high number. Yeah, um, and some of that had to do with Jarrett Stidham holding on to the ball just his second start. Um, but I mean, even if it, you take away three, that's still eight, and that's unacceptable as well. So um, All right. Uh, yeah, he bookended the year with really bad performances. So he really did. And and her pan his first two years at Auburn, the first two or three weeks of the season, they've been at or at the very bottom of the country in tackles for loss allowed. Yeah. Uh they've had very slow starts. And they had a very slow start this year with an experienced offensive line. That's not that's not a good look on any coach. Uh no, and you're gonna be developing centers. guys this year. Yes. Uh, so uh, are you confident of what he kind of can do with that group? And also, recruiting's not going very well for the offensive line. No. And he's got to close strong. I mean, I, not, I say he's got to. I don't know if his job's at Jeopardy, obviously. Like I said, he's got a contract in hand. But for his future, he better close strong. And also for Auburn's future, because Auburn's offensive line recruiting kind of took a, a little bit of a gut punch uh, about two years ago, I believe. Um, and they haven't quite recovered on the trail, and that's going to start showing up. What was the gut punch? Well, they got Tyler Carr and Bailey Sharp, and those guys just haven't panned out. Oh, you mean that they didn't, they, not that they missed out somebody, that they successfully got people, <laughs> and they just didn't turn out to be what right, they wanted? Right, right, right. <laughs> that's not great either. That's, I took it to mean they missed out on somebody. No, 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 that. no. The, the, the recruiting's been okay and good. But it's just yeah. some of these guys just haven't been what you think, yeah. Um, and you think there's going to be some turnover with some of these guys that aren't even close to the sea in the light of day. Uh, um, you know, I, I don't know because there, there, there really is some wide openings right now. So maybe that, that would keep guys around in the spring. Maybe. But, but maybe, maybe after the spring. Yeah, maybe uh, after You'd the see spring. something. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. It's only mid-January, but you usually start hearing about attrition at this point. About yeah. players transferring everything, and I haven't heard any rumblings yet. So um, keep an eye on that, folks. I mean, that usually happens late January. Well, into Stan Truett had already left at this time last year. He, I think it was like two days after the game, or even maybe the day after the game. Yeah, it's pretty quick. He left. Um, so happens. They've in always every, had a happens in every program, and they've had high-profile guys go every year. So yeah. 
Um, so we'll, we'll see, but th- yeah, that's what I've heard on the herb hand, uh, rumors. And, uh, I know a lot of folks were, uh, speculating on the body, get a message for it, all And then I got a message Sunday morning going, Hey, uh, there's some rumors going on here at the coaches convention. Um, but, uh, one source I really trust tells me he's got a contract. Um, uh, other coaches, by the way. I don't believe have got have seen their contracts yet. And that would be Cody Burns, who's I think the expires at the end of the month, and Travis Williams. Are you referring to? And others, I believe every coach on the staff is going to get a new contract. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, um, they're going to be getting raises, uh, but they have not. There's only been discussions so far with those guys. Uh, no formal contract or memo of understanding or anything like that. Now, for guys like Travis Williams and Herb Hand. At least with her hand, as I said, he's got a contract. They figured that out because their contracts were expiring. These other guys, their contracts weren't expiring so quickly after that. Mm-hmm. Peach Bowl. So we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll, of course, be trying to keep tabs on that over here the next month or two. Uh, some of that stuff might extend into March and April, uh, to be quite honest. It's happened before. Mm-hmm. It usually does when the agents and lawyers start getting involved. Also, um, Gus Malzahn's contract, we're still trying to get that hammered out trying to figure that out um ad rumors i know a lot of folks want to know what's going on with the athletics director situation there's a name that's been rumored on our board quite a bit i'm not going to mention it here because i have not heard it uh uttered in official capacity by anyone involved in the search um which might be a smoke screen but until i actually hear something i can't report it but a lot of folks are putting a name out there that's a rumor right now uh, the only thing I can report is that Michelle McKenna Doyle, the NFL CIO, who is an Auburn alumnus, uh, she pulled out of the the race uh, for the job, um, which makes me believe that Auburn is close to hiring someone. Uh, mm. Usually, people don't start pulling out of that stuff until they know that Auburn's kind of find that found their person or they're zeroing in on a couple of folks. So. Um, keep an eye on that. Um, I know I've long said January first was probably the area, but once they uh, cemented all uh, Gus Malzahn to a new contract um, after the SEC championship game, it, they, that that kind of slowed the timeline for them. They could spend more time looking uh, for an athletics director. Um, and I'll say this: there is a big push by some folks for Tim Jackson. Hmm. Um, don't know if that's going to happen. Don't think the president necessarily wants that to happen, but there are folks making a push for him. We'll see. With this, this like this new era of these contracts, it makes it really interesting with the ads. Because how do you not have an ad that's essentially handpicked by the football coach, or at least has a uh, big say in it? Yeah. Because I mean, really, who's reporting to who? Well, at this moment. Everybody's reporting to the president. Um, no, but what I'm saying that. is, that, like, when when an AD's hired, he's not going to make he or she uh, is not going to make anywhere near what Gus makes. Um, well, true, and, and it's like and that, that everywhere that, in the SEC. Yeah, but now so. it's getting to the point where the, the longer term deals you're stuck with, right? It's not like a right. you know before you talk about a five year deal that you get out <laughs> at one or two and not be hamstrung. I mean, seven years, and if you're talking three fourths guaranteed. I mean, that AD is not going to have any say in the football department. Well, I'll say this. The good thing for Auburn in a certain extent, if it works out, obviously, is you got to have stability these days, and you just don't see it anywhere. Uh-huh. They, feel like, they feel like they can have that with Gus. I mean, his worst season was a seven-win season so far. It isn't like he's been like Gene Chizik or yeah. anything like that where like it goes, uh, you know, national championship, seven wins, three wins. Um, Mm -hmm. he's kind of maintained some semblance of normalcy. And then every few years he has a really good year and he's got his quarterback coming back, of course, this season. Um, and they got him to a new contract. Now, the thing that sits sour with a lot of folks, of course, is that the two teams he beat Georgia and Alabama are playing for the national championship Monday night. Yeah. And so everybody's going, well, that he didn't really do anything. Well, the only thing he really fell short of was beating Georgia for a second time. And he couldn't beat Georgia for a second time because 
Carry on Johnson was nowhere near 100. Yeah. percent He's the heart and soul of that offense. And once they had a turnover uh, by Jared Stidham in the red zone, where they could have went up 14 nothing or at least 10 nothing, the game was over um, at that point. And uh, Georgia, in front of a favorable crowd, uh, took advantage of it. And it's difficult to beat a team two times in a row, especially in front of a home centric crowd, and especially against a one loss team that is now playing for a national title. I mean, I know everybody wants and believes Auburn should be contending for national championships, but guys, I know you hate to hear this, but outside of Alabama, who is doing that besides Clemson? And Clemson didn't do it this year. I mean, Nick Saban, and you're going to hate hearing this too, and I've said it before, I think he's the best coach to ever coach college football. I mean, send the hate letters over to you. Yeah, I think he's already surpassed Bear Bryant, even though he can, I think, tie him or surpass him with national championships Monday night. I I don't even know. I haven't kept up with that. But what he's done in this age of football, where things are so, so competitive, scholarships are limited. I mean, it isn't like the old days where you can bring in as many guys as you wanted. Um, I mean, how can you argue against Nick Saban being the best coach maybe of all time in college football? And so anyway, I say that to say this. And then you've got Gus Malzahn who's beating him and is one of what, three coaches in the country that has beaten him? Active head coaches? And then he also beat Georgia and he's be- he beat the two teams that are playing for the national championship and people are upset. I think people need to take a step back, look at the bigger picture and go, Oh, this is why Auburn couldn't beat Georgia a second time. Maybe they need to get better in that situation. That doesn't necessarily mean that's just, that this is the wrong head coach. I mean, Gus Malzahn has Auburn doing things in a time that I don't believe Tommy Tuberville would have been able to do, considering what Nick Saban did. Nick Saban chased Tommy Tuberville out of town. I mean, that that's why Tuberville was fired or let go. Um, this... What Gus Malzahn's doing, he's providing stability as much as you can in this age. And I'll also say this. Nick Saban ain't going to coach forever. I mean, how much how much longer do you think Nick Saban coaches, Mike? I know this is just out of left field, but I, I just don't see him doing it much longer. I don't know. I, see, I think the opposite. Those guys are wired differently. Uh, I think it's going to be hard how, for him to walk how away. Old, how old is he, though? I mean... Uh, I don't see him doing a Bill Snyder type thing where he's like 78. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but let's see. He's, he's 66, so five years. I can see him going five more I can see him going five more years, maybe, yeah. It's a long time. Five sure, more yeah. national titles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I think he makes it to maybe 70. And yeah, calls it a day. Sure. Maybe he tries to win one more national title uh, if he wins uh, Monday, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, but that I, could I, be next year, and then that's that. What he's just going to step down? I don't know. Certainly, he could. So, but he could just say, "Look, I want to win them all, like Pokemon." <laughs> like Pokemon. <laughs> I, he's I don't the Pokemon s- Go of uh, college football. Yeah, I don't see a seventy-five-year-old Nick Saban on the sideline. No, the but seventy-one, seventy, I could see it. As Gus Malzahn says, coaching ages you in dog years. Yeah, when you lose. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's more or less uh, like like some fast potion that's worse than dog years. Yeah. Like, like 20 years added to your life. That's why Gene Chizik's on TV now. Uh, okay, so let's move on from football. Um, anyway, I, I said that all that to say Nick Saban's an amazing coach. I think Gus Malzahn's a really good coach, a great coach. And I think Auburn needs stability. Gus Malzahn is their best option for now and for the foreseeable future. Seven years? I don't know. Five years? Sure. I would have done like a five-year contract with them. I wouldn't have done seven. But whatever. No. Maybe five years is guaranteed. That's the, that's the key here is figuring out how much of that money is guaranteed. But we're well, still thinking about that. But the, the, I mean, we're reaching – It's getting, I mean, what, Gruden got 10 years, $100 million from the Raiders? I mean, these contracts are just I – mean, It's getting dumb. There's getting it's going to get to the point where just this flips, you know. Uh, Will it though? See. 
I don't know, but you'd think because it's I keep saying that every year, and then this, I think it's like $10 million contracts now. But how much more can you go? I mean, how many, you know, there's only a handful of schools that could give a Jimbo Fisher deal or a Gus Malzone deal. Uh, I don't know. At some point, something's got to give. Well, it, it, I think it would take the mid tier schools and lower tier schools to step up and have some power. Yeah. And, you know, say, this can't keep happening. We're not going to keep taking your $300,000, $1 million checks to play a game, and we could barely, you know, build a facility, and you're paying all these coaches all this money, and we have no chance. Or Jimbo Fisher flames out after a year, and they think, oh, my God, what have we done? Hey, hey, that could happen there. Yeah, it could. And I'm just saying, like, you have nine years, you're looking at a nine-year deal. I mean, jeez. Well, I mean, you have to give a coach three, four. I think you have to give a coach four years. Um, anyway, but, uh, yeah, who knows? Anyway, um, let's talk basketball. I mean, that's really the hot topic right now at Auburn. Um, Mike, this basketball team, um, has surprised me and surprised a lot of folks. 14 and one, two and oh, in the SEC beats Arkansas 88 to seven, 77. Arkansas is number 22 in the AP poll. Uh, earlier this week, or earlier last week, I should say, Auburn beat Tennessee, nationally ranked also number 23, at Tennessee by double digits, by 10 points. And then Tennessee rebounds Saturday night and beats Kentucky. Yeah, that was um, crazy. Uh, and I was not expecting that. I thought Tennessee would be just wiped out. And they would play hard early, but then Kentucky would take over. But uh, uh, the SEC is looking much better than I thought it was going to be. Um and Auburn's right at the top right now. Now, it's very early, but uh, you can't argue against what they've done. Third longest winning streak in the country right now at 12. Very winnable game coming up Tuesday. And they should be ranked Monday, right? Yeah, you'd think. Uh, I mean, being two ranked teams in a week, uh, and there's been a lot of losses in the top 25 at the bottom kind of to go with that. So uh, there'll be enough turnover when you beat two of those teams. Is it 23 and 22, or was it 24 and 22? Uh, it seems like you have an easy, easy way to slot in. Uh, and what's that first time ranked in how many years? Ten years? Over January, there? January twentieth, two thousand three was the last time they were ranked. Fourteen years. Um, Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh yeah, it's two thousand eighteen. Uh, so pretty monumentous day. Uh, Bruce is going to try to downplay it though because he wants his team. There's a lot of work left to be done, and I think he sees that there's a thin line. We kind of talked about that last night. Uh, just with the nine scholarship players playing, uh, you got to be focused, and that's how they've kind of done it with effort and focus. Uh, and he doesn't want their head getting too big because I think that's when he, he kind of sees the road. If you go down that road, uh, it's going to be trouble. Yeah, definitely. And they're doing it by, you know, playing um, just with more effort, grabbing more rebounds, though they didn't out rebound Arkansas, uh, shooting the three very well. Jared Harper dishing and assisting players. Chumo Kiki kind of hitting some outside shots that teams aren't quite prepared for. He's got a very nice uh, stroke with the basketball. And guys like Davion Mitchell and Malik Dunbar kind of giving you those, like, a couple good minutes here and there driving to the basket. Um, they, they, they've got role players, um, and they've got the hot shots. Bryce Brown hitting a three-pointer last night uh, when Arkansas could have cut it to four. And then they miss a three-pointer, and Bryce Brown fires back with a three, and Auburn's up 10 again, and that's the game. Uh, they just they seem to come up big. And Jared Harper has really started games hot and kind of ended them very well when needed. Uh, and I thought last night, everybody, the decision, the, the, the talk, excuse me, was a lot about Mustafa Heron scoring his 15 points, but a lot of that had to do with Jared Harper dishing the ball. He had eight assists in the first half, um, none after the first half, by the way. But uh, he and Mustafa, I thought, really kind of changed the game for them in that first half. Yeah, it's interesting. Mustafa still hasn't kind of taken been consistent off. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly so, just hasn't been that consistent lead scorer for this team. Almost Bryce Brown's been kind of their offensive identity, just with his hot shooting. And then I think Jared Harper, sort of after that, uh, Mustafa showed he can kind of go on those runs. Like you said, he had 15 points in that first half, but uh, didn't score until – uh, final couple minutes and finish the game with 17. So interesting that he's sort of at times kind of had to take a step back um, to those other guys where you kind of thought without Austin Wiley, he'd sort of be the guy. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And still waiting word on Austin Wilde and Danger Purifoy. We have nothing new there. Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, I wanted to speak more about the future this season for this program. Uh, 18 SEC games, obviously. Two are down, 16 left to go. Then the SEC tournament. What do you think this team's got to do to stay in the NCAA tournament conversation and then make the NCAA tournament at the end of the year? Avoid a lengthy losing streak. I think that's the, uh, <laughs> and avoid a serious injury. I, to- I talked about that too. Just the idea that this team's so thin. Uh, if you get an injury, you're going to have to be playing one of the, those walk ons. Uh, um, and I think that's impossible, it would be impossible to overcome. Uh, but then the other thing is, so you got a young team. You got two freshmen playing big minutes. Um, you got a, a small rotation. You're going to hit a wall at some point, and you, I think you can afford to lose maybe three or four in a row. But you can't have that snowball. And I think that's going to be. I think they're going to lose a couple of games here, uh, maybe in a, a back-to-back three-game losing streak. And how do they respond after that? Because I think that's the key. Uh, Coach Pearl talked about this a couple weeks ago that they haven't faced much of adversity. Tennessee, they did. Arkansas, they really didn't. I mean, they were led that game pretty much through and through, uh, up 21 points uh, with about 10 minutes to go, 12 minutes to go. Um, but they're going to hit a wall. They're going to face some adversity. And how do they respond? Do they have enough firepower to kind of turn that around? Because uh, like I said this team is thin, and they are dealing with the reality that they are not necessarily. Um, they don't have any. They adapt, especially in the front court, uh, as teams are going to be facing in the SEC. Yeah, and Auburn has done well still against teams that have outsized them, which is pretty much almost every team, including yeah. Arkansas Saturday night. They had two bigger guys on the floor and uh, uh, really kind of quieted them. Um, who was it? Uh, Jalen, I probably got his name wrong, Jalen Barford for Arkansas was really hot uh, shooting the basketball in the second half, really kept them in it, mm-hmm. um, and if not for him. Oh, and the officiating to start the second half. But uh, he, he really kept them in it. Um, but Auburn did what it had to do to to win that basketball game. And the thing with Auburn, and I mentioned this on our Facebook Live Saturday night, is it's hard to overcome a team that, one, out-hustles you on the boards, and also at some point in the game you just know is going to hit a hot streak shooting the basketball beyond the arc. How do you, well, yeah, how they do you match that? 7 of 12, and Arkansas couldn't keep pace, um, and not many teams can. Uh, but I mean, you know, and, and, uh, their coach talked about not coming out and being kind of focused, not having that energy level, uh, you know, and this was Auburn's problem last year. You just got to guard the three and they just never did that. And so they got to, they, you know, teams against them just have to not let that happen. Be, be play better defense, uh, which is what Auburn's kind of been their secret to their success this year, that they're not letting them teams shoot open shots or getting out in transition and, and hitting those and kind of taking off on runs. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it takes effort and it takes focus. And Arkansas had that in the second half. Pearl, Coach Pearl admitted they got outplayed in the second half, but they had built up such a big lead, it didn't matter. Yeah, and Arkansas still only outscored them by six right? Um, in that second half. Um, and, and you just see it, like I said. You know Auburn's going to get hot at some point in the game, whether it's at the start or middle or beginning. Just look just look at the uh, Tennessee game. What were they down, 14 at one point? Mm-hmm. And uh, came back and they took control in the second half. Um, they just have that in them, whether it's at home yeah. or on the road. That's a good thing to have. Um, all right, so Auburn uh, in the NCAA tournament hunt should be ranked in the AP Top 25, the coaches poll, when those come out Monday. Let's go to listener questions as we wrap up this episode of the Auburn Undercover Podcast presented by WeHaveDonuts.com. Uh, first question comes from an old college buddy, short lawyer person. <laughs> Is Carl Winslow the greatest television cop of all time? No. You don't think so? Who's the best television cop? Well, I mean, are you talking about like just comedies? Because I mean, like Law and Order. I take. Uh, I take. It, I mean, I take three or four of the the uh, cops, uh, detectives on Law and Order than I would uh, Carl Winslow. I think I take Carl Winslow just because we don't know what kind of muck he got into we never heard about his job so you think he was like murdering suspects no well it was in chicago and chicago's pretty bad yeah i don't know i don't even know tv cops uh stephen bradshaw asks oh okay here we go better for auburn fans an alabama victory or georgia on monday night uh, my answer is does it matter 
What's better? For Auburn fans. For Auburn fans. Gosh, I don't know. Probably Georgia, just because Alabama fans would be rubbing it in your face more than Georgia fans. But they're still going to be rubbing it in your face either way. But in the long term, probably but the man, thing Georgia's would be Alabama. recruiting without 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 a national championship. Yeah. Georgia's already recruiting at a level that's pretty crazy. So uh, Alabama's always going to do that. I think with Nick Saban there, um, I don't so think maybe. they want to add, 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 add ammunition to uh, Kirby Smart's pitch because uh, you guys are going after the, a lot of the same players. Uh, Alabama, there's some overlap in Alabama, but I mean, um, it seems like they fight Georgia almost just as much or more recently just because of the way they're both regionally focused and Alabama's nationally focused. Uh, this is a question for you, Mike. Uh, this comes from Cody D. Chances on Auburn getting EJ Montgomery back? I don't think so. Uh, he's kind of kept everything under wrap and key, uh, not really talked about his recruitments. Um, heard a little bit that Florida probably is going to be, you know, be a contender, but, uh, I mean, hey, if he's still there, maybe they kind of kick the tires of it in a couple of months and reset, but uh, I'd be surprised. Jordan Jackson wants a basketball recruiting update. What you got? There's nothing going on. I'm sorry, guys. There's just nothing. They're focused on the they're, – they're down coaches. Uh, they're stretched thin as it is because uh, they're, they're missing two staffers. Uh, the, the guys that they're really relying on for recruiting, one of them is obviously gone. Um, and uh, – they don't know what they're going to need yet because I think they're waiting to see what their, how the roster shakes out at the end of the season because there could be a lot of upheaval uh, depending on what happens not only with Austin Wiley and Daniel Purifoy, but Mustafa Heron has a decision to make. Um, and what do they need? How, what, well, what's, what's their top um, holes to fill? Because I don't think they're going to be able to fill four slots, but two slots. What's, what are the two positions you need most? Maybe Mustafa decides to say. Maybe his evaluation is not good, so you don't worry about small forward, kind of a slasher kind of type, and you just kind of focus on size. So um, I think that's what they're kind of waiting for. Uh, we kind of hit on this earlier. Tony Perry wants to know, do you think Asa Martin could come in and win the starting running back position midseason the way Michael Dyer did as a freshman in 2010? I, I would say anything's on the table at this point, but I would have to side with like the guys who have already been here, Cam Martin especially, uh, being able to win that starting job at running back. And it may very well be this is a season where they go more by committee than anything else. Well, but, I mean, the thing for him, though, is he'll have a chance, which a lot of teams you can't say. I mean, Auburn's going to give him a legitimate look. And he's an early enrollee, which always helps. So um, that does make a difference, I think. Uh, I'll preface this uh, question from Stephen Stanley. I, I tweeted earlier Sunday that, in an alternate universe that uh, Perfect Strangers would have been really popular in the 80s and they would have done a spinoff called Young Balky, kind of like what Big Bang Theory's done with uh, the Young Sheldon crap. Uh, <laughs> Steven asks, why did Cousin Larry put up with Balky's nonsense? Because they're a family. And that's what it's all about. Just ask Van Diesel. Yeah. Um, you think that they're in the Fast and Furious universe, too? Probably. Everything's in the Fast and Furious universe, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, we're in the Fast and Furious universe, and that's good enough for me. Okay. I don't even know what that means. How are we? <laughs> How are we in it? Okay. Dave Brown asks, will we have the personnel to win it all next year? Mm -hmm. uh, it's too early to say, but, I mean, they got some pieces to fill i like what they got on defense still offensive line is a big question and running back um yep and i think on on paper they don't look like one right now and that also the schedule schedules maybe the biggest and then that's their brutal schedule the years because they're on the I road mean, on the open season in atlanta against washington and then you got to end the season on the road at georgia and at alabama who just played for a national championship and Atlanta is slowly becoming the LSU of the East Coast for Auburn. <laughs> LSU East. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It's difficult. Can't can't lose three straight games. That would not be good. But especially in your backyard when you're trying to recruit all those guys that are going to yeah kids that are area. paying attention. All right, so that's it for listener questions. Anything else you want to discuss? 
Not really much going on. You got anything? No, I haven't been watching NFL playoffs. I don't care. I have not watched a single. I had it on in the background, but I mean, uh, I don't really know what's going on. I guess the quarterback caught a pass that he threw. I don't really know how that works. I saw that headline, but Marcus I didn't see Mariota. It. Yeah. Yeah. That sounded interesting, but um, weird teams in it this year, too. Jacksonville, Buffalo, Tennessee. Yeah, I had that on in the background, and I kept looking up while uh, writing and posting on our message board, and it was, like, scoreless. <laughs> it yeah. Was awful. But whatever. Okay, well, that, that'll do it. For this Auburn Undercover podcast presented by WeHaveDonuts.com, D-O-U-G-H, Nuts.com. Make sure and give them a visit and check out what they offer. Uh, thanks for listening to this uh, episode. We may come back later this week, depending on any news. And, of course, things going on with the basketball program. They play Ole Miss and uh, a trip to Mississippi State at the end of the week. Is that right, Mike? So Something like that. And then uh, Alabama after that, I believe. And then that's, Alabama the week one. after. So that's yeah. going to be big on the road, by the way. So yep. uh, that's going to do it. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your work week. Um, as Auburn looks like, it's going to jump in the top 25 in basketball for the first time in 15 years. Thanks for joining us.